Hi, my name is Raghav Mantri, and today I'm going to present my final year project titled Feature Selection for Demand Forecasting Incorporating External Covariates. Time series forecasting is essentially a time series problem which predicts the values in future time steps from the historical observations. We can broadly classify time series forecasting in two ways. Firstly, the single step forecast and secondly, the multi-step forecast. For this project, we utilize the Extreme Gradient Boosting Regressor or known as XGBoost. XGBoost model or the Extreme Gradient Boosting Regressor is based on boosting, a highly effective and widely used machine learning method. Boosting works by applying an algorithm, be it for regression or classification, sequentially to the re-weighted versions of the training data, and then taking a majority vote of the sequence of models that were created. We utilize recursive feature elimination as a feature selection method. RFE is a wrapper style feature selection method that fits the model with the given input features and removes the feature that is the weakest. That is, RFE seeks to improve generalization performance by removing the features whose removal has the least effect on training errors. It does so till the specified number of features are reached or till the time the model fits with greater training accuracy. It stops when the model does not achieve a better fit with the training data. Our proposed approach utilizes both internal and external covariates as input features for prediction. Internal covariates here mean engineering features from the target variable itself, while external covariates are variables that we get from the outside. In our case, we get it using Google search keyword trends. These Google search keyword trends are transformed into time series data using the APIs Google has provided. Our external covariates are external variables that potentially have an impact on the demands of the product or the sales of the product. Since we work on a data set which consists of information about medical products, our keywords are related to these medical products and they're actually diseases. These diseases are Google search words that are related to the product. We have utilized for this project 25 such time series as input features to predict the product demand. These are two of the input features that we have shown on the slide. Our proposed feature selection pipeline works as follows. We first create a rolling window of 12 time periods to each search keyword time series. Principal component analysis is then used to dimensionally reduce the 12 generated features into one principal component. After this, we use recursive feature elimination to get the best subset of the dimensionally reduced search word features. Finally, when we get these dimensionally reduced features and the selected ones, we generate a moving window of 12 months for the target variable as the potential input features. We then run RFE again to use among these lag features to get the best set of lag features. Finally, we obtain our input training data set. The experiments we conduct are on a data set provided by a multinational company which sells medical products to hospitals. Each row in this data set consists of a particular product's information about its sales of one month. The way we split training and test data is as follows. We keep 36 samples for training and six samples for testing. We utilize this algorithm on 87 such different products that are sold in Singapore. To evaluate our model performance, we perform an ablation study to gain insight into whether this approach yields satisfactory results or not. We first compare our results against only those with selected lag features of the target variable we obtain upon performing RFE. Secondly, we compare our results against search keyword trends without using principal component analysis. Thirdly, we compare our results against the most recent lag feature of the target variable. And fourthly, we compare our results against the T minus three timestamp of the lag features as the input. Finally, after utilizing our pipeline and comparing against the benchmarks, we evaluate our results using two metrics, namely the root mean square error and the mean average error. As you can see from this table, more than 50% of our products show improvement in terms of RMSE when we use the XGBoost model. And we also notice that the XGBoost model outperforms the random forest model. Next, we conduct product group wise analysis in which we club each product into its product groups. We evaluate the improvement in RMSE as compared to the benchmark approaches while using the XGBoost model for all those products that underwent an RMSE improvement using our proposed pipeline. Here from this table, we can notice that over 66.63% of products from several product groups show an improvement. This slide shows some of the plots that we obtained after evaluating our results. 
we can notice how close our benchmark is from the original values. We can also notice that our particular pipeline performs much better than the benchmark itself. From this project, we concluded that our results using the proposed approach perform well for more than one products and often for more than 50% provided in the data set. This is a clear improvement over the previous research done for this demand forecasting problem because the previous research only incorporated information about one product. Our pipeline is also more robust because it works well for products across different product categories as well. We also found out that information from the internet can help us in understanding public's preference for certain needs and certain demands of these products. We also noticed that by utilizing the information over a window of 12 months, we add more information per timestamp that can help in improving the forecasting using this method. While we did improve on the previous results from the benchmarks, we still realize that there is some aspect that our project can be improved upon in the future. First of all, we can improve the time complexity of our project by replacing RFE with a more efficient feature selection algorithm. We can also tune hyperparameters like the rolling window size. Thirdly, we can also tweak with generalizability. We can even increase the amount of products that are improving under our model by making improvements. And lastly, we can utilize neural networks to fit much more complex functions to get better forecasting accuracy.